if you found some great finds at garage sales, yard sales, um, estate sales, um, Goodwill, all of those kinds of outreach centers, things like that, you go looking for old frames that have pictures in them. They can be framed, unframed, but you want something that would be like, you know, imitating like a ghost would be hiding here or something would be going over the top. And so we found a bunch of different ones. So just different, like in all the different styles, this one didn't have a frame. This one is a Parisian street. Okay, so we've got all kinds. These, I think we all recognize these from our Tuscan days. So there's just a million different kinds of these things out there. So you go looking for some cool old pictures and then we're gonna do thrifted ghost painting. Now, if you've seen this on social media, on your Instagram and in TikTok and some of those videos, this is a big deal, right? So, but maybe you're not free handy. Maybe you're not that kind of artist. So we're gonna show you how to do this with stencils. Okay, so you can take your stencils that you already have, um, that you have, you know, one that has little bats and spiders and things like that on them. Um, you can purchase new ones from studior12.com. We have 7,000 titles and a whole ton of sizes. Um, so we can hook you up with all the themes of things. And we have a bunch of Halloween. So here's a Frankenstein castle kind of thing. We've got spooky trees with ghosts and werewolves. Um, just to name a few, we've got gates and fences and ghosts and tombstones. And then of course your spider webs. You've got a happy Halloween freaky night. One with the witch and the moon. And I love this one. This one's a monster one kind of just a haunted castle. Um, one with chains and all of that. So we have all the different pieces. So what I'm going to show you today is how you would put some of this together and then how you treat these different framed items so that you can be the queen of this hot trend or king. Okay, so we have a million stencils. Um, there will be a category of these stencils for you to go look at and see. And so then let's start with this round one right here. Okay, so this is dirty. Okay, it's been laying around for a good old long time. And then what we did for each of these, just to make it easier, because we have so many things, we went through and just made, whoops, I'll do it that way, um, made a little, took a picture of the art and then overlaid um, the different emblems. So we put a little fence here, little rat, cat, bats, that kind of thing. Um, and so we just did the different things. I'm gonna show you how to do different um, transparency and misty effects as well. So this is just like placement and would the sizes work? So we did that. And then how do we clean this? So we're gonna get out your gla glass cleaner. You could, um, I'm gonna wash the glass off while it's in the frame and then I'll show you about how to get back into things. This is, that's how dirty that is. Okay. And so I'll clean it again. The color is probably going to change here with as much dirt as I'm wiping off. So I don't know if you would clean the dirt off of the frame because it's meant to be kind of haunted, but maybe just, you know, get some of that nasty extra stuff off. Okay, so we've got that clean. And then what you're going to do is with something like this that has, I've got actually examples of a whole bunch of different things. This has got these little staples in here, so you would just bend that up using a screwdriver. Just go all the way around, and actually you can just do it on one side or the other, if I could do it. This is from the good old days when these little things were made out of real metal. Okay, I think if I go one more, I'll be able to sneak that out. So let's see if I can. So you'll go in and just pop that loose. And then you can take your painting out. So the one thing that is very important to know um, is that it's hard to paint on top of framed things with the stencil because the, the plastic has to bend and it doesn't bend that way. So in this case, I was able to take this out. In every case of these, I could do that. but. Um, that down and then so now you're left with a piece of paper if I was doing this which I'm doing this um, 
I would grab the Krylon 1311 matte varnish. Um, it is a spray varnish and it is good for all kinds of surfaces, all kinds of mediums. And so then I would take this outside on top of a piece of cardboard and I would mist it in two directions. And that way I protect this paper because sometimes paint and paper bleed into each other. So this will harden it, seal it, make it be a finished thing. So I'm gonna get that done and I'll be right back. Now we're gonna take our stencils. I'm gonna dig through my pile here and look for the one with the fence and we'll continue this fence. So I'll take a little piece of tape and this is a technique I like to do a lot of times is just tape onto my table instead of taping onto suspect paper. And I can just tilt this and pull it in how I want. And we'll take our daubers. We're gonna use daubers. Actually, on this one, I can use the brushes. I've got daubers for a different reason. You wanna stay put. I'm gonna show you a lot of techniques today. Okay, so we wanna put our fence on first and I don't think I want it to be straight up white. So I'm gonna just brush mix a little bit of gray. So a little bit of number 36 with number 27. And then we'll go ahead and just stipple. These are super fast if you're using stencils. Pick up more white. Okay, so it's super easy to just go ahead and um, paint right on that paper or that print. So that's like one of the simplest ways. So then I'll slide this down connect it to those posts and then just stipple to finish. So how fast and easy is that? And then we'll take, and we've got our witchy poo in the sky. So we'll put her in the lightest area, get another dome. And I've got out my acrylic paints for this one. And then we'll put her so he's not sure what he's seeing, but he's looking at it. We'll take a peek. Yeah, that looks so good. How fun is this? Okay, and then we'll take our cat. We'll put him down in front of things. I think we'll move him off to the side. Always offload your brush. If you're new to this kind of painting, you wanna always offload your brush. So notice that now I'm layering in front of the fence. So I moved the cat is gonna be bigger because he's in the foreground. That's an art tip. So see now he looks slightly almost out of, out of size proportion with this little boy, but um, because we moved him forward, that's allowed. Okay, and then we've gotta have a little rat on the fence. Let's have him going in front of here. And then bats, gotta have bats. So now we can have maybe this one can be bigger. And then you can make a huge, a cute little vignette of the different um, have your painting hanging and then put the drippy candles and some ghost cobwebs kind of thing. Um, just really have fun with it. Now I can take a few of these and I can move them to the background by just doing light, light pressure. So maybe we'll have this guy being a light, light one too. And then there you have it, super easy. Now you're just going to go ahead, you're gonna reload it on your cardboard push those little pins down, and then you will have your spooky art. So here I am back in the frame, and then you could take some um, stuff and you could mist it across and you could put a black bow on it and then make a beautiful bowed ribbon at the top, hang it and make it be so creepy, cool. All right, so there's how we do it with glass and we can take apart. Now I wanna show you what we do when we have something that would be more difficult. So this is something that um, actually these two, these three are the same. So these are a matched set, which would be really cool to hang, you know, up and down from each other or side by side. And then this one, we have like a castle in front of, 
and that kind of thing with the bats and stuff. And so we would be painting maybe, if we didn't want to take this apart, we would be painting on the glass. I want to show you this one. This one has also got um, this completely protected everything going on here. So I brought a knife and let's see what the back would look like. So if you're not gonna be hanging this for good, then you can totally hang it for play. So this, some of these would take some digging. You'll have to get in there and see. So this might be one that we might decide to paint on the glass. It's not giving in easily. So instead of doing that, flip it over. Let's show you what that would look like to paint on the glass. I'm gonna put my brushes in water and let's see what our picture looks like here. So this one, we have got the werewolf on the roof and a um, spider web in the corner. So we'll start with this now, because this frame goes all the way out, what I would do if it were me is I would do a little bit of a distressing technique. I might take, um, depending on how haunted you want things, I might take my sanding block and just rough this up just a little bit and maybe even take my paint brush. This is a feather brush, but it's really good for um, just giving just a little bit of dry brush action. So you might dirty up your frame. You could sponge on some techniques and so you could totally just give him some distress. Maybe he can have a little bit of black going around here and there. Not so shiny. So don't forget the frame when you're doing this. Just kind of here and there. I love this feather brush for doing dry brushing effects where you just want a little bit of skim coat on things. Now we're just not so new looking anymore. Okay, so now we've got a little distressing. Brush goes in the water. And then let's get some cobwebs going. So we can take, now we're gonna switch to a jumbo dauber and we're gonna switch to um, glass paint. So DecoArt makes a great um, gloss enamel paint that is multi-surface. So they're multi-surface acrylic paint and it is, um, glossy finish to craft projects. Um, and I think basically you can use it on like a ton of things. You can use it on mugs and tumblers and things like that, but you can even oven heat it to make it permanent, but you would not be doing that with this, obviously. So I've got those already spit out. I've got a clear medium. So gloss enamels clear. And then I've got a pumpkin color and black and white. So in this case, we'll just hang our cobwebs over, get the right paint. Offload, always offload. Over the corners of our frame. Okay, let's see what we have. Getting stuck with my fingernails not being there. Oh, so that's kind of good. I like that. It's just that kind of got a like insinuation of paint. So I'll go over here and add more. Oop, wrong paint. So what you could do, if you wanted this to be a stronger color, you could do a couple of coats, but you'll have to leave your stencil in place. If you wanted to do that, you could um, just tape your stencil down. So I could leave that right there and give him a little tape and show you the difference. Okay, 
And then in the meantime, we can move on to another element. So we'll go with our moon. And put that right in that middle section of the sky. And then we'll use another jumbo dauber. And then what we could do is we could use our white and then we could go in with a little bit of that clear medium and we could diffuse. So instead of having it be super strong, we could diffuse it with a little bit of clear and go back out, go into some of the white and then do our moon. Don't think I mixed enough of the clear in there. They look about the same. Okay, let's take a look at that. Ta-da! We'll go back and do our second coat of black. And then we'll take it off and see how we, how we did. Yeah, oh, that looks really good stretched in those corners. So this is really cool because it gives you depth of field. So you have this beautiful, like deeper, deeper, deeper elements going on and it's kind of magic. All right, so now what else do we have in our little parcel? So we've got a werewolf on the, on the roof. I don't think I'm gonna finish this all out. I wanted to show you how to paint on the glass and that is how you do that. So then you just would add your ghosts and keep adding and keep adding. I think I do want to dry this and show you the witch over the top of that so that you can see the layers. When you're painting on glass, you're going to want to do way more drying time. So you want to make sure that you give things drying time. This is a non-porous surface, so there's nothing for the paint to like suck, soak into. So it doesn't dry from the back like other projects do. And then we put her running right through the middle of the scene. Ta-da, isn't that fun? Like how cool is that to do? We gotta get one ghost on there. Let's do one ghost. And then do you know that if you don't like the direction your stencil is facing, you can flip it over and use it the opposite way. So that is a really cool technique too. Now, one thing to pay attention to is if you want a ghost in your scene, if you put a white ghost over a white building, you're not gonna see it. So you wanna make sure you put your ghosts in places that will matter. Cute, this is fun, you guys. This is actually really fun. So you can put your cats in your, oh, everything. Can I keep playing? Okay, so Keep going, keep going, keep layering, keep doing the things. Um, you could add in some glitter in places. You could add in some metallics. You could totally have so much fun with this. So painting straight on the glass is super easy. So that's another one. So now what if you don't want to take this off and you can't get it off and you have a raised frame, okay? That's one that is tricky. But so when we did our pictures of these guys, um, we did them with the little houses on this scene, which is super cool. And so what you can do is, so if the stencil won't lay in there flat and see how that's raised right there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your tape and you're going to tape down right there on the edge and you're gonna make it lay down. And then you'll take your little piece and then just anchor that so that'll hold that down and now you can paint on top of that <clears throat> with your glass paint we have lettering and alphabet stencils as well so that you can um, 
put words, um, ghost saloons, some things like that. We've seen a bunch of really cute ones if your buildings are big enough to do that. Okay, let me peel that up. And then that's how you do these things without being able to lay the thing completely flat. So you would bring in a ghost and have him there and then you would just pinch him down and tape him down. And that's how you'll be able to bend your stencil without bending. If you bend a stencil, you can't unbend the stencil. It's really hard. So try to bend the stencil, not bend the stencil. Okay, on our final one. So I hope you guys are having so much fun. Make sure that you give us a thumbs up if you are liking this content, if it is showing you how to do crazy things with old pictures. Um, no fair taking the old family photos off the wall and playing with those. Okay, so here's the one that has the frame built into the wood. So what happens with these guys is sometimes it's hard to stencil on these because of the flex of that. This one's not super flexible, but you could take a towel and you could kind of ram that in the back of it and kind of build it up a little bit so you have something firm to push on. So on the um, glass paints, when you use a stencil brush or yeah, a stencil brush on glass makes it really hard to base coat. So that's why these daubers are super great because they're so dense and so they're solid and they leave down a solid amount of paint. So when you're doing acrylics, you don't have to worry about that. So just switch into a dome and then let's ghost this up. Okay. Once again, if you don't like the angle that it's going, flip it over. So I'm gonna lift that tombstone up. Give myself some stability. Okay, and then we have another. Make them be on different planes. Don't make everybody be the same. So like lift one up and make him look like he's further back. And I think three is a good number. So let's put a little oval guy down here and let's make him in black. No, let's make him in gray black. One of the fun things to do is to make like you have a whole bunch of depth by moving things up and down and dark and light and all of that. Another thing that we can do before we get too far in is to go ahead and take your white paint, get a gray in it, and then we know we're gonna put a ghost up in this area. So we can go in and make just a dry rub, misty night, and we can go kind of behind the, the moon, behind the barn, through the trees, and then just kind of go around and around. This is one of my favorite techniques. So then we pick up and just do a little bit more right through the middle and bring it on down. And now we've got this kind of creepy movement going on. All right, next we go in with our fence. We've got one more that's on there. I'm not looking very far ahead, am I? Let's go. Okay, we'll make him be light. And now we can do our fence. So we'll lay that down. Put this guy under there because we're going to press him down. Go into our black. Not very black. Yeah. 
pan. Okay, and then we go a little bit more. So this is how you can continue the line going straight on down. Okay, look how cute that looks, guys. Amazing. Okay, so now we'll get some ghosts on there. Having an idea of the direction you're going when you start is a really good idea. Um, you won't be able to necessarily always be the, somebody that could lay it out like this, but just knowing, oh, okay, I like maybe this here, and then maybe do a little rough draft on a piece of paper or something. So that way you feel good about what you got going on. And I just put my brush away, and now I want to put something else on there. Ghost coming up out there. Maybe we'll go creepier ghost. And then what else we might want to have? We can do an RIP. Ah, made gray. Then we can do some faces. This guy gets the ooh face. This guy can be having a good time. Yeah, that's fun. Okay, and then if you want to, we need some bats. We gotta have bats in these. Maybe, can you hear the gears grinding? Maybe you can go in with a little bit of black in your tree. Just make it just a little bit more grim looking. And that moves that barn kind of forward. Let's get a black cat in there. Here's a little black cat. Maybe he can be standing on something. And then do we have a pumpkin? Just gonna use the glass paint orange. And maybe tone it in my black so it's like a dirtier looking Thing, and then we can put <laughs> a little bit of pumpkin face. Face. Fun. And then you could take final, final thing, and then we're going to be done playing because this has been very fun. Um, is we could take just a little bit straw color, use something that you have that's pointy, and you could just give some whisks of hay or straw coming out the bottom of that, and then up your fence posts just to make it look super like layered. And so things don't look like they're just sitting down on top of each other. And I think that this is a fun little video. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Hope that you definitely give us a thumbs up for all of the fun effort that we're doing here and then make sure that you subscribe ring the bell and we'll see you in the next video